dear colleagues, uh, it is a pleasure to welcome you to this um, the EAU TV platform. We are here at the, this huge EAU Congress event in the City of Lights in Paris, and it is my pleasure to welcome Professor Hein van Poppel, who is the current chair of the uh, EAU Policy Office. Welcome and Correct. thank you for being with us. So today we are going to discuss and talk about what are the new um, what are the new uh, upcoming news on what is PSA screening? It has been a while now since PSA has been discovered in 1970. Then uh, in the 90s, the first studies on PSA screening, RSPC and PLCO, started until first results were published. Um, and in 2012, there was a recommendation against PSA screening. So, PSA screen. So now we are start seeing some drawbacks of this recommendation because number of advanced pathology cases, number of meths when prostate cancer is diagnosed are increasing. But since 2012, longer follow-up of these studies were published until the most recent studies, which are estimating that screening at 20 to 25 years can reduce mortality up to 30%. And whilst the first result of the ERSPC stated 48 men needed to be treated to save one life, now we are more or less in order of 9 to 11 patients that need to be diagnosed to save one life. Furthermore, many other uh, tools came out, such as active surveillance and MRI to avoid biopsy. So screening hugely, hugely changed. Uh, we have many other tools and currently EAU recommendation have a risk adaptive strategy. So could you tell us what are the current recommendation of EAU in terms of screening and how we should proceed with patients? Yeah, it's, it's important to notice that today the EAU is actually not yet uh, advocating population-based PSA-initiated screening. Uh, the good reason for that is that uh, actually the recommendation of the Council has been to pilot and to, to do a stepward uh, approach where we are not there yet because the results will be ready only in 2026. So the recommendations today in the guidelines is that you should well inform the patient about the pros and the cons of PSA-based screening, the possible implications, the possible uh, possibility of needing to undergo a biopsy, the possibility to maybe need active treatment, to maybe have cancer and not being treated with uh, simply uh, no active treatment but active surveillance. So it's some kind of shared decision making that is now recommended. It's exactly the same in the United States. So there is no screening program today uh, advocated by the EAU guidelines yet. And what about in terms of the first PSA? If the, if the patient wants to embark in this journey, when should the first PSA be done and what should we do in case of, uh, let's say, suspicious PSA? Well, we have with the EAU been working on an algorithm on how to do it. And actually, we sh do not advocate that PSA should be taken in non Risky patients, there is risk groups, there is African Americans, there is severe family history where you, this is not the screening population. The screening population is between 50 and 70, 69, 70. And these men should have a PSA test after shared decision making and following the value that you get at that moment, either the patient just comes back in two years or in four years, or he needs to be considered as rather high risk or intermediate risk to have significant cancer and at that moment he will first undergo an MRI and after the MRI a new risk stratification and eventually a biopsy. So this is completely different of what we did before in the ERSPC study, in the American study, a PSA above 3 was immediately followed by a biopsy and this gave rise to 50% overdiagnosis and eventually over treatment. And this is the big blame. This is why the United States Preventive Services Task Force has, just like you said, stopped to advocate PSA testing in all men. Exactly. So now we have 
a risk adapted approach, which I think is, is a very important tool. Now the, the guidelines recently changed the cutoff. It's not four anymore to, to raise, raise some yeah. kind of suspicion and go further with examination. And then a PSA higher than three does not automatically trigger a prostate biopsy, but exactly. you can use nomograms, you can see PSA velocity, and you can also use, of course, MRI before, before deciding the biopsy or not. So yep. with all these things in mind, what is the EU policy office undertaking in terms of, uh, of this work, in terms of, uh, of uh, prostate cancer screening? Um... Well, we, we were lucky because Ursula von der Leyen, a couple of years ago, initiated the BEAT cancer plan. And we told, if you are serious and you want to beat cancer, you need to prioritize the most frequent male cancer. And in many European countries, it's the second male killing cancer. And then they said, yeah, but then you need to do something about your overdiagnosis and overtreatment. That's the first thing. And the second thing is we need to stop opportunistic screening. Opportunistic screening is screen uh, young men, men that are too old, screen too frequently, have too many MRIs. It's costly and it had been shown not to be effective. So we now have a risk-based strategy through which we can cut on the overdiagnosis that we were blamed for so many years ago. And this is by looking at the prostate volume, this is looking at family history, African-American, uh, at uh, BRCA2 gene mutation, as I said, prostate volume, and then risk adapted. Either you come back in four years, or you need to have further follow-up with eventually an MRI. Yes, it's very interesting because when the first results of the RSPC came out, the 48 was the number needed to be treated to save one life. Whereas if you read the most recent uh, publications, 9 to 11 patients are need to be diagnosed, yeah. not treated anymore, because yeah. some of them, of course, will undergo active civilians, for yeah. example. And more specifically, specifically, how is the EAU trying to implement this well, risk adaptive strategy? When the, when the Commission has actually come up with beat cancer plan, we have said, OK, we're going to prepare something. And we have made recommendations for the European Union and the European Commission using that algorithm that I just prescribed. The Commission has a special scientific advice mechanism, the, the, the SAPIA, there's a scientific advice by European academies on policy. And they have looked at, uh, they have uh, been take, talking with stakeholders, with epidemiologists, oncologists, uh, urologists, with patients, and they have come up with a recommendation for the U European Commission to say that there is a good basis to advocate a risk-adapted screening strategy provided that MRI is used before biopsy and taking into account that that way we will stop the opportunistic screening that costs a lot of money. This advice from the Commission has then gone to the Council and the Council needs to speak to the Member States and the Member States did not all agree. You can imagine that uh, in Malta, in Belgium, we are below the mortality rates of the, the main of the European Union, in the Baltic states and in Scandinavia, it's much higher, the mortality is much higher. So not all countries were inclined to do that, and there has been severe debates not accepting to start population-based screening, as was actually recommended by the SAPIA. But the Council has finally said, no, we need to do further investigations and piloting. We're going to get a stepwise approach so that the member states can try to find out whether it is feasible, it's cost effective, it man come, etc. And this is where we are now today with the Praise You project exactly is going to show in five different member states so exactly. this, how it works. This was the, the, the last question I wanted to ask. At the Congress there has been a very nice and interesting session this morning about Praise You, uh, which has the objective, let's say, to also convince the states that are not willing to start yet this kind of program. So could you give us an overview of what is Praise You and what are the short and, let's say, medium-term objective of yeah. this? Well, the, the Praise You is not aimed at showing that prostate cancer screening decreases mortality. 
This is clear. Everybody it. accepts it. So it, it's just a two-year program, and one year has already elapsed. So we have a two-year program. We will start five pilot studies in Ireland, two in Spain, one in Lithuania, and one in Poland. So different countries where they do between 5,000 and 10,000, up to 30,000 in Poland, men invited to come there and have their PSA sampled. And then they follow the algorithm that we have shown, and this should be paid, it's funded by the EU for Health platform, and these sites will come back with results already in 2026. We have to report back to the Commission so that the Commission at that time can say this is feasible, this is acceptable, this is doable. Because it needs to be shown that men indeed come when you invite them to have their PSA. So 26 will be the end date where we have to deliver the report on what these pilot studies have shown. So thank you very much. This is a, a very interesting area because, again, prostate cancer is mo the most frequent solid cancer in men, so the impact, I think, will be huge, hopefully po positive okay. for patients. This has been a really interesting discussion, and congratulations for this amount of work. And uh, I think we are all looking forward for next year and for 2026 results on a bit of a longer, longer term. Thank you for being with us. I thank you. Thank you.